find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's ready to get awesome, get geeky. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to uh, talk tech as we do on Tuesday nights here. It's at Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, giving you our Steel City point of view. With me on the couch, you all right over there? Yep. Okay. I was looking. Do I need headphones? No, it's just you and me. Oh, it is just me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're all right. Uh, it's John Chachilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing? I'm pretty good. Yeah, we I go. was scared there for a minute. I'm like, wait, is it? Wait, wait I'm not what? ready. Something's nothing's <laughs> on my head. What's happening? Um, but no, yeah, you're you're fine. Completely okay. fine. You're you're good. It's just I'm in the safe zone. You just you I'm and in the trust tree. Somebody else had had a family commitment, or they would have been here. But that's okay. <laughs> okay unacceptable actually i'll give them a post uh, <laughs> as i call them out uh should i drink that had a new uh uh podcast up today oh so, cool I, and i like the new format uh and it came up like accidentally actually because it came <laughs> up like next in stitcher and i'm like oh and i'm like you know uh, this is gonna be like an hour i'm not up for this it was like 10 minutes it was really nice nice so, so doug keep it keep it up over there I, I like i like the show still going and uh and like and, and i got background on the Penn brewery uh, announcements this past week so cool. not that i'm really big into beer news but now i know i knew mm. people were making us think about it on twitter so i missed what happened but i'll now i'll go listen to the podcast there, there was announcements some new f- lines of flavors or whatever ah. something like that so um but anyways this is the awesome cast we record here live every tuesday uh about 6 30 p.m eastern time we're starting to get things kicked up and uh you can also follow us on Twitter at AwesomeCast on Facebook and Google Plus. Please email your thoughts and, and recommendations and everything over to AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com and subscribe to us in audio and video on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or Stitcher. Uh, we like to kick this off with our awesome thing at the week. If you guys are live in the chat room, please let us know what's your awesome thing and we may talk about it here on the show. Uh, so let's kick it. I actually kind of have two, so I'll, I'll let you go That's first. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, There are two things I want to discuss but I am decided which one is the awesome thing. Um, but you got something here called FIDO. So, well, it's FIDO's an organization. Okay. And today, so com- companies like Samsung, Google, etc. belong to FIDO, and it's a it's an alliance of members. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are working on the standardization of password. It's, it's actually a new password-free standard. So... One of the big things when you when you think about authentication and things of that nature, creating a standard that works across different companies, different devices, etc. Um, I did not look to see if Apple is a part of this alliance, but um, they're working towards a standard across devices and operating systems that actually allow you to sign into accounts without a password. Um, things like USB hardware tokens, biometric data like fingerprints. Um, things of that nature. Um, I'm personally really interested in this because I, uh, I I don't use a password manager, but I try to create a unique password for all the different sites or mm-hmm. based on kind of like a if it's banking or if it's something I really don't want people in, then it's it's a set of passwords with additional information. It whatever, but to me, this this they, they didn't do integration for Bluetooth or NFC, which I think should be included, um, which I'll kind of get to in one of the other topics I have. But to me, not having to create a password that's just a char- number character sim- sing- symbol string um, to me is a big deal. Whether it's I plug my phone into something or I brush my fingerprint across something, to me, that is a good way of knowing who I am, whether it's, and I'm interested to see how they do this and how they actually execute on it. Do they tie it to a a bunch of things? Cause they actually talked about, um, second factor authentication. So you need more than just a user ID and a password. You need 
who you are, what you know, and what you have. So maybe it's it ties together the fact that it knows what your typical device is and the phone number on that device in addition to your user ID and password. So uh, I'm personally interested in this and I look forward to the day that I don't have to fill out CAPTCHA or crazy click boxes or I, I heard one story today about there's a site that to try to get rid of spam bots, they show a picture and they say pick a picture below all of the pictures below that that coordinate with the picture above. And I'm like, yeah. okay, that's weird. It's weird. I, I understand where they're going with it, but I really like like Motorola has the flips. It's like the Bluetooth clip on thing that you can kind of put anywhere, um, or based on Bluetooth tethering, you, it, it does or doesn't require passwords for some of their devices. That's that's what I'm looking forward to, and I hope in the next year this is something that makes it big. Awesome. Awesome. Um, cool. Cool. Uh, well, I, like I said, I have a couple. Let's let's stay on the security front a okay. little bit. Um, you know, I have some potential security issues here. Physical um, security. Physical security issues here. Uh, so I was playing with it. Actually, let me cue it up here. Um so I, I was like, you know what? I have a couple of webcams. I have all these computers. I wanted to uh, look into a kind of DIY kind of security, you know, um, and, and something that would be, you know, pr pretty easy, pretty user friendly. It's not, you know, it's not too hard on the hardware um, because obviously I'm going to be using some older stuff. And I test run this. Um, I test run it with my newer Windows 8 laptop um, just because I was like, OK, let's let's this is the thing that's going to be reliable if this is going to work. Right. Uh, so I found a, a few articles on this, and the one I liked from the description is SightHound. Uh, this is free for one camera. Okay. Uh, you can I, you can buy a license for it starts at about sixty bucks, and I think that gives you, if I recall, uh, four uh, cameras, and that's like four cameras on a computer or on your account. Okay. For instance, um, I couldn't really figure out how to get the app on my iPhone to work because it says uh, uh, plug in your IP address and then your username and password. I used like my IP address for here and that didn't work. So I, I, I couldn't figure out how to do that in a little bit. I was experimenting with this. Um, but the cool thing is uh, uh, about SightHound is it doesn't just record. I'm not going to have like 24 hours of video sitting there every day, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, then that's going to be a little sketchy. And I'm using, I'm using, uh, granted, really crappy uh, webcams with this. <laughs> so, um, but but I set it up. I actually set it up like Sunday night, and I let it go through the day while I I went off to uh, my one clients that that I go to out of town here. And uh, what's cool is it'll just kick on and start recording when it detects motion. And again, I'm, you know, you know, my wife keeps saying, is it going to recognize people? Is it really going to do that, right? Uh, especially on such a low camera that we were using on. It's really crap. I can't stress. I think I paid eight bucks for this camera on Ooh. Amazon. It's the one that we used to use in the cafe when I just like wanted okay. to put a cafe cam on. So I was like, let's just buy the cheapest thing. We have no budget. We'll update it later. Um, and I still have them around. Um, but if you get into this, uh, here's the interface a little bit. And again, you know, it's bugging me. Uh, basic two cameras, I can purchase that. The unlimited cameras is a bit more and everything. And here's, if we click here where there's a little bit more, there's my wife leaving. Um, but you also notice, and I'll see if I can pull this up a little bit. I guess I can't really. Um, but there's, it actually uh, throws some, you know, a block around everything. So you see the object that's moving. It's identified them. I, I now have video of everybody uh, coming <laughs> in and leaving on my street, uh, for instance. Let's see if I can find that one of the mailman where he didn't take my package and I'm really pissed off about. Uh, here's somebody. Oh, there goes the mailman without my packages. Uh, and I don't know if you can see in the video online, but there's like there's a yellow box. Mm -hmm. And that's saying, um, you know, I can say everything where you've identified people. Here's everything where we've, we've identified people. So now I can go through this and, and, you know, it's catching like, you know, people walking down the street. You know, if I'm like, okay, did anybody come on my porch and like take my package? Especially right now when that's a big problem mm -hmm. um, with, with all the holiday gifts. And tell you what time it is and everything. Uh, unknown objects, and any objects on, on this, you can name each camera. You can actually go in here. If I go into the, I think if I go into the camera and if I go into, you can edit a rule. And it gives you a nice little flow chart 
of, okay, video source, my front road camera, right? Uh, what am I looking for? Any object. Or you can say, I'm just looking for people. I'm just looking for, and maybe it has other stuff other than people, maybe, um, that are anywhere in the camera. So if you're, for instance, if you're in a shot, it was explaining, and, and um, you just wanted when the door moves, say it's a wider shot and the door's like over here, mm -hmm. like over on the side of the shot. It looks like you can say, okay, I, I just want to know when this area moves. So it's not ah. picking up if you're like going past the door to go up the steps or down the hallway or something that it's like, I want when this, this object, when it moves, when it or moves, I want it to record or, or do whatever it does. So you can set up these roles. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> well, does it do so when it does multiple cams, do all the cameras have to be plugged into the same machine or can you run it? It does support IP cameras. Okay. So I, I think in this case, it's like all the, all the documentation that I was, I was reading was basically discussing IP cameras and ones plugged in. Cause it talked about, you know, having multiple cores cause you basically need to have like a core for each camera so it can process all okay. that. I mean, it is recording video. Um, so you're gonna have to think about, you know, do you have enough space? That's why I'm like, uh, you notice the stack of computers over to your left. Uh, we're going to see which ones are compatible with this. I think it's like a two gigahertz Pentium four is all you need to get nice. started with one camera and granted low end camera shouldn't be a problem. That's enough. Like that. I would love a little bit more clarity, but I can see a person came up and did this, you know, you know, that's, that's, that's all I want, you know? which makes me want to experiment a little bit. Like, let's find out what the dog really does when I'm away all day. <laughs> um, the cat comes over here. I don't know if you noticed this, but I got this big cat hair problem over here. Uh, and, and I apparently snuck down one time <laughs> and, and, and he didn't see me. Um, but apparently he comes up and like just sits on this laptop. Whether it's huh. up or down, he just sits on the laptop. He's just like, I like being here. And I don't know what he's looking at. I don't know he's trying to look out the window or whatever up here. But um, does it... What does does it say? What or do you know what file format it stores in? So can you like easily export if you wanted to save something off or? Uh, they, I mean, they, they they play fine in publicly shame someone on Facebook. Is it easy to take that file? And I think it is because it, it, it dumps everything. I have it set to dump to like the video folder on here, and uh, I, I think it, it, it looks like it's pretty much a standard file from what I've seen. Cool. Let's see if I can pull up some properties here and see what it gives me. Um, it just says MP4. It's, nice. just, a, it's yep. just a dot mp4 so yeah i can throw something on youtube like well, what this jackass did in front of my house <laughs> you know or i was like i should send that video to the postal service and it's got the timestamp. you're like hey this guy this why didn't he take my packages what's going on and and maybe it's another thing where i can be like this this and this i know you know th this is the trend he came by this time you know so we can say well he was running late and he just didn't look you know or, or something like that right um sometime next time somebody says uh they didn't do what i know they did to the cop uh, in front of my house, uh, I can be like, okay, well, we'll check my security security camera. You know, that's the idea. That's, that's really what cool. I want. That's what I want to happen. And I looked it up on the article. There was actually because I'm like, oh, can I? You know, am I good just like pointing at the road? You know, um, the UK has the rules of et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, as as we know, mm -hmm. the privacy concerns and everything over there. Uh, but US, it'd be like, as long as it's pointed at a public space, like the road in front of your house or whatever. Um, there's no laws, but there's like again that expectation of privacy, and like don't put it in a bathroom. So I think that's more to cover if I had a storefront, say, and I mm -hmm. was putting a camera in there. Maybe you know what could I do? So, um, but yeah, it, it, you know, I I think I am going to experiment with this a bit, and maybe I'll put one in the studio. You know, it just as a little bit of peace of mind, you know, um, of you know, or maybe I'll catch ghosts. You'll catch ghosts. <laughs> You'll never know. You'll be the You'll next Ghostbuster. Um, but yeah, no, and especially you know, in things like you know, we're talking about that. If we do take trips or anything, we can check in on things. So I, I like that that idea as well. Um, so it actually might be worth dropping the money for the license if, if you know if we play with this really well. Like so, right off the bat, the first one I chose seemed pretty decent. I'd love to hear if anybody has any other ideas, uh, better software, anything like this. But this again does everything I need. You know. Um, it's just kind of getting the hardware. Like I need, you know, so pull pull some computers. I, I gotta see what speed that one is and stuff, you know. But I have all these lying around. I can, I have a reason. So now I'm gonna be tucking, like, computer towers mm -hmm. in corners of my house as I as I run these things. So, well, I wondered, like, if if you could get away, like, it, like, if I had a, if I was willing to pay for the license and I had two spare computers, I'm not gonna run 
a 50 foot USB cable I feel across like, the I house. Feel like it, it, the impression I have is that it's going to be um, account. So basically mm -hmm. you log into your account on their website and you pull up all the cameras. You'll see all the cameras regardless of what they're attached to. Cool. Like uh, that's, that's what it seems to be on here. If you want to check that out, it is sitehound.com. Um, and it gives you a little bit more information. It does work on Mac and windows. I was really hoping it would work um, on Linux because that would have been really, really nice. So, um, and the app works on Android and iPhone. So you have an option for each of those. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty well done. Yeah. So uh, sitehound.com if you want to check that out. Um, the license, let's just start. I think there's a, a $60 and a, yeah, uh, Oh, geez. You can buy the basic for $60. That includes high definition support, uh, two cameras, uh, export to the cloud. To the cloud. So I, I presume they just goes up to their service, remote access. Oh, okay. The free version does not include app access. So that, that's, ah, that's, that probably why I, that's probably why I wasn't given an IP address and everything. Uh, run external commands, technical support, new versions. Um, and all that has support of apparently at both $250 if you need to run more than two cameras. But that's unlimited. Mm. So Oh, it's unlimited. Okay, it's so unlimited you jump from, from two to unlimited. Yes. And granted, that is new updates for, I think, the first year. So it is a timed kind of thing. So, But, I mean, if it works and it continues working, you don't need the new features, then that, that's not an issue. So. Um, so I want to talk about my other awesome ish thing, but before we get to that, uh, I want to call out our, our sponsors, uh, the guys that provide us with some great pizza to feed our in-studio guests, uh, slice on broadway.com. They're here in the South Hills in Pittsburgh. They support Pittsburgh podcasting. So we're going to support Pittsburgh pizza by telling you about them. Uh, go check them out. They're right here on the Broadway, uh, right where the, the tracks are on the road, the last street trolley in the city. Um, okay. Not the last, I keep forgetting. I'm so, I, you know, Allentown kind of doesn't count because they don't run it on a regular basis. They don't run it at all anymore. It's like an access or do it, it for yeah. access when they're they like close the tunnel when the tunnel's over there. down. But the last place you can <laughs> <laughs> ride the street train uh, over here in Beachview, tucked between West Liberty and Banksville. Don't go to don't not to bash their competition, but don't go down to Beatos. You know, Ew. come on, they're 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 they don't you know really. You, you need to, to be you need so to make snob. your you need to cook your cheese. You need to cook your cheese. You need to be so snobby for not cooking your cheese. That's my issue. I I they they're right they're they are right there. They're right around the corner. I've always had a pizza place as close as I've ever had one in my life. And I won't go there. I haven't gone there in years. I was I was giving them Ugh. like a year to year and I would just have a horrible experience every time. It's like, nope, bad. nope. Slice is great. They treat everybody great. Uh, they have a, also a new location over Carnegie PA over on Main Street. So please go check them out and let them know that the awesome cast sent you. Um, so. And make sure you check out their uh, their specialty pizzas because oh. they are beyond oh. amazing. I'm getting so hungry just thinking about I it. I got the Slaughterhouse 5 last oh, week. Slaughterhouse 5. If you like your meat, yeah, it's, it's a, a plenty of meat. Five. Meat on meat on meat. It has the bacon, it has <sighs> prosciutto. Oh, it has the pepperoni. It has. It just has all. It, if, if there's a meat, it's on there. <laughs> if there's a meat, <laughs> if there's a meat, it's on this pizza with the breads and the cheeses. All right. So we talked about it several weeks ago, and we kind of gave first impressions um, because we really hadn't jumped into it yet. But Google Inbox was a thing that happened, right? Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's been around for a bit. I've been kind of loosely using it. Um, I'm I am as well, but I'll give you my my perfect okay. use case. That okay, Google must know uh, something. And I had I had a really good experience me. with myself and a client with Google Inbox. I, I'd like to share. So uh, you go first. So Google must. So I blow people's minds with my inbox because. Let's let us let us look today. I have sixty one thousand six hundred and forty two unread messages. That's right. That's sixty one thousand six hundred and forty two unread messages, not including the red messages. I've seen, I I've seen very comparable numbers <laughs> over the last week with some people. So this is not so. A I don't thing. I don't read junk mail, but I also don't delete it. Google must definitely be tracking 
the messages either it's basing and now because I don't have that account in a contacts list. So I forward mail from my work email to my home email if it's something that I want to read later that's not work related because a lot of times at work I can't get to the site where I want to read something. Mm -hmm. um, so I email it to myself. Um, inbox has noted that I, I don't know if it noted that I always read those emails and now I get them as like a pop-up on my phone and it's in my like APNS messages, like my notifications. So, and it's, it's paying attention to who I read email from and then giving me a, a notification on the phone that I just got an email from that person. Hmm. So it's, it's really nice for that fact because then it, it's, it's created this workflow that's kind of backwards, but if you work in corporate America where they lock you in a room and don't let you get to a lot of the internet all day, <laughs> it gave me the ability to quickly take my device. So I, I forward the email with the link. It comes right up on my device in a notification. I tap on it. It opens. I click the link, and then I click add to, add to pocket, <laughs> and then it's pocketed. Yeah. So then I then I just okay that's gone like and then later you then I it. later I just go into pocket mm -hmm. and instead of sifting through my inbox or searching for my my corporate account mm -hmm. to try to find the the thread of all of the links then it's in pocket and I just go home and boom boom boom, boom, boom. I have all the stuff that I wanted to read that's but awesome. didn't want to use my work day to read that's so, awesome so that's my where I really right. have learned to like it I have this client. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, I've done some video work for them, uh, but I really kind of settle into tuck support at a certain okay. point, um, to helping them out. Um, and, and email has always been a problem for this person to the point where they're using Mac mail and have for years. Okay. Use the, use the Mac mail on their iPad, on their iPhone. And you know, when like, you're talking to somebody and, and you can tell because every time emails brought up, it's like, I have so many emails. I have so many emails. And it's just, it, and, and she doesn't have time, you know, she just does not have time with her situation. Right. So I was like, okay, we're going to solve this. We're going to try this. You're on your iPad. You're on your iPhone. Let's do this and see how it works. And I told her, use this for a week. And then I spent probably an hour or two explaining it. What do you do? Making sure they're hands on with it. Um, because the problem is, you open up the Mac mail, you double click on something, it pops up a window. I'm, I walk in, there's two monitors filled with Mac mail windows. <laughs> there's no way for anybody to work. The organization doesn't work. And if, if your brain, maybe for some people, if their brain works that certain way, and they can keep that Mac mail under control, and they're in there every day, sifting, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Also, search is just horrendous on there, mm -hmm. right? Uh, case in point, this was the, this is my example, and it was just like this is my personal example that I see that you you d cannot handle your own email is like I had to send an invoice, and then three weeks ago when I'm like hey you know what's going on they're like can you resend that to me I don't because if it they didn't see it when it, it's like Twitter if it did, they didn't see it when it first came in it's gone <laughs> it's not coming back that's where this was so. We looked at it and explained how everything groups and everything. And then somewhere over the weekend, I started using it full time <laughs> <laughs> because I'm still on the case where um, I had uh, important, <clears throat> excuse me, important unread, starred and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I have all my rules. I have all my my bacon folders and everything else. And this goes into this this group. But then like everything's kind of sitting there. So even though that email that I don't deal with until Monday when I'm with that client is in there. And I know it's there and it's tagged for their, their group. It's sitting there staring at me. And now it's on my mind. Snooze is so great. Oh, I haven't. See, I haven't. I have had emails. I have had an email. I, I can't believe this. I have had two emails that have been staring at me for a year every time I've loaded Gmail. But I've never gotten. I never dealt with them. But just like a, okay, this is a, this will get done when I have a moment. Never had that moment. Now. I went ahead and snoozed those for tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, and at least, like, they will remind me every day, you got to do this, you got to do this. They're not just something that's there, something that's, like, it, that's just static for me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I have inbox zeroed. 
period. Because it started going through as far as inbox goes, right? Um, the thing that scared me, the thing that scared me was I didn't understand what happens to the emails because when you checkbox it, is it gone? Because they would disappear from Gmail. You go, If you start checkboxing everything mm-hmm. and then you go to Gmail, they're not there. Where do they go? They're there. They're just not visible until you search for them. Now, I don't understand where you go. The, 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 the thing is, we need to get out of this idea, out of this idea that there's folders and this, that the mm-hmm. tag system in Google and Gmail kind of already kind of takes us out of this. You know, it's like, don't, you know, get out of the idea that this goes in this folder for this thing. This mm-hmm. goes in this folder for this client. No, you tag that. Now, okay, I have an email thread with, with John Chichilla. I searched John Chichilla. For instance, we'll go to my Gmail. I don't think I have anything sensitive in here. This is what it looks like. Or my inbox, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. If you guys are on video. And, and it's very like, if you're, you know, it's search. It, 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 it's not as busy. Because so much has been added on with Google Plus and everything in your Hangouts. And, and, and it's just gotten so busy. And it seems like it takes so long to load whenever I go to Gmail these days, right? You got a search bar across the top. You got your inbox. You got your little hamburger button. So you can pull up all your, your your folders and stuff on the side there, and that's where everything's kind of hidden, right? Um, you also have your you know chats and apps and everything in the corner, notifications. So right off the bat, and this is me. I, I kind of decided I, I tried not to check my mail for the last few hours to make sure something built up so I could show what's going on. But again, everything's bundled. Everything's nice. Um, I got, uh, for instance, I have this email. It's been here for, uh, eh, I snoozed it four days ago because I know Tuesday morning is the morning that I'm going to get to these kinds of things. Uh, obviously, I'm not getting it to now, to it now because I'm in podcast mode and I can go ahead and snooze it. And uh, tomorrow, 7 a.m. is default. Next week at 7 a.m. is a default when it's like, well, that's not happening this week. You can take care of it. But then it's really task listed everything. You talk about the corporate kind of. Uh, uh, structure, right? Going through that on Monday morning and having everything that I've snoozed through through the week because I know that's the thing for Monday morning Mm -hmm. and checking those things off because you're not again you're not really supposed to use email as a as a to-do list as a task list but but the way some corporate structures like people this is say like, hey yeah. you gotta do this thing you gotta do this thing you gotta do this thing so rather than taking those and plugging it into my remember the milk for my to-do list um then this becomes its thing. So it's like, okay, check, 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 check. And now I go to my, my every week task list, you know, that I mm-hmm. have for that job. Um, it's worked out really well. Cool. <laughs> uh, and now that I'm not afraid that like I checked it, it's like, did I, did I pretty much it, it's, did I acknowledge this, that this is an issue that is something I can address or is like, okay, that's nice to know. Uh, you know, I mean like, I, I, and, and I'm letting it group the things it groups and I'm, I'm bringing the front, a lot of the um, tags as bundles that I have. Um, for instance, like regularly, it's going to take all my social stuff. So here's something from WordPress, and here's something from uh, like updates from Google Plus from the uh, podcasting technology resources, right? And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, that's that's nothing I'm really worried about. And I'm, I'll go ahead and uh, actually, this might be something. So I'm going to actually check that for later. <laughs> so use that until tomorrow at least. Uh, but everything else looks fine, and I can. To hit the all check mark and that entire bundle just goes away. I'm done. But you're right. Nothing gets deleted though. Mm-hmm. So when I go into Gmail now and I go into the you know here's a, a here's a bundle of stuff for Twitter. So I still get notifications because I have so many accounts. Mm-hmm. So the account that I may be not on all day, I want to know something came in. So there's just another line of defense for me to see those things. Um, but so I have a, a bacon colon Twitter. Uh, tag filter uh, that I set up in Gmail and I get rid of rid of those sure okay they're gone out of my inbox if that's the way I'm focusing if I go back to Gmail I'm going to go to that that bacon folder in Twitter and I'm going to have like a hundred emails because all I did was hide them so at some point I think you need to do a little bit of housekeeping there before it gets untenable Mm -hmm. but if it's something like a bacon folder is like I know I can delete all those because I've already seen those Mm mm-hmm in some aspect and they're not even marked as red so now your unread counts is, is going to bump up in gmail oh so it's going to get even higher because there's a lot of stuff <laughs> you didn't read because you glanced at it said nope 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 and it's easier to do than check mark check mark check mark as everything's mm-hmm. you know bashed together in gmail um it, 
it's been tremendous. Uh, last three days with this has been pretty good so far. And, and, and as I went through things and, and, I, and it actually started saying, um, because it started putting like my tweets and my stuff for my work bundle, and it's like, no, this doesn't belong here. And it's going to be a little bit of adjustment phase for that uh, uh, over, a, over a while. And we'll see what happens throughout the week here. Um, but as it, and then as it went, it started throwing up like bundles for like here's all the stuff from July, here's all the stuff from April, here's all, and it kept going back until it didn't do it anymore. Like it only, I think it just kind of decided you don't want anything before this. Um, and now like I I pull this up and like literally this is it that this screen of emails is all oh, I have. This nice. doesn't even scroll down any further really. That's it. And even like how there's eight promos in here. They're all in one spot. That's the thing that would blow up your inbox. I would typically, after, since this is the one of the biggest bulks of time where I don't check my email, typically. Um, by the way, at a glance, I see I have a Google Voice that I always miss for the Wrestling Mayhem show later tonight. Mm-hmm. So I'm already in a better spot here. <laughs> um because it's that would come in and then it get buried by everything else off the screen. I wouldn't even no- notice it until the guys told me because they got it too. So uh, it, it, it's it's awesome. It, it, once you wrap your head around it and say this is the way to do email and this is the way I'm going to do email, um, it, it just works. It just works so well. And, and as I'm as I'm getting client emails and everything, I can I can I can handle them, you know. And then and then everything else is kind of hidden until, you know, because I have that like email, f- not frustration, email anxiety, I guess. Like I, I, how many times I've checked back and then, and I, I, I just click over to my Gmail tab and kind of rescan all the headlines several times and realize how many times I was doing that through the day and how much time I was wasting versus this is very at a glance. At a glance. Even if I'm doing that, it's at a glance completely. So uh, I'm curious if anybody, I, I, I get invites like every week. I've been trying to have some fun with it on Twitter. So um, like currently, I'm pretty sure yeah, I have three invites. So if anybody wants any, let me know at Sorgatron on Twitter. I have a couple invites. Yeah, or even keep checking in. Yeah, just, like I said, it. Uh, yeah, at Sorgatron here. Oh, what did I, I already did that part? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a weird night. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's it's great. It's 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 a great different way to look at it. They fixed email, guys. It's tremendous. So. I, I think we're gonna see like a lot of companies trying a lot of different things in the coming year with this. I know Microsoft's making a a stretch at this IBM's making a stretch at it Google's obviously hitting the ground running I think it's going to be a different year for email I, I think they're going to try to they're trying to streamline the way we use it it's the year of the because it's broken I think I think email is broken mm-hmm. It, it's, well, it's, it, it's 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 not been updated in how many years Gmail I, you know, I, and Gmail I think did a lot to help mm-hmm. right uh, and they have been and they've been adapting and been updating um but but yeah, yeah. I think it's been. I, I I think I think they're going in the right direction. No, it's not perfect by any means. No, it's not for everybody by any means. But I think, like I said, I think it's going to put people in the right direction. So, uh, you got an app up here for us to talk I do about. Have an app up there. Yes. Back on the back on the ideas of authentication. Um. So the app is, and I apologize. I got completely. I went into the black hole of the internet. Um, let me bring back up my browser. Finger Key mm-hmm. is an app for your iOS device, primarily your iPhone 5S, 6, or 6 Plus. Mm-hmm. It's two bucks. Um, I'm not going to lie, I haven't tested this yet because I'm trying to find out a little more information to make sure that it supports my older MacBook Air. But it allows you to use the fingerprint sensor on your phone to authenticate and log you in to your Mac OS device. And you can actually use it on multiple computers. So if you have more than one Mac, um, you can use it to log in on all of those. Um, They do have a widget, so you can just swipe down, pick the computer, put your fingerprint in, and boom, you're logged in. Um, Where I think this is nice, especially in the work world or, or whatever, you get up, you walk away from your computer, you go get a cup of coffee, you go to a meeting, and you're on your way back. And as soon as you're within a certain amount of distance from your computer, you can actually hit the fingerprint and log in as you round the corner to your computer. So you don't have to physically be necessarily right, right in front of it. Um, you can kind of, and I do this all the time with work, um, 
I'm constantly running from meeting to meeting, so I actually pull out my phone to look at the phone number if I'm logging into a phone call. Mm-hmm. Um, so as I'm walking back to my desk from a meeting I was in physically, I have to dial out the phone to then connect to this other meeting. So I'm looking up the phone number for the next meeting as I'm walking down the aisleway. Um, this is another one of those things that my computer will be unlocked. And I used to actually have a, 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 a wireless fob for, and it only worked, I think, as far as back as Windows XP, but um, that I could put in my wallet or on my belt or in my pocket, and it would automatically unlock my workstation when I was, I think I had to be within 15 feet. So I really like this technology because I'm constantly moving around. Um, I don't To me, this is huge. It uses encryption to AES 256 bit encry- encryption for the password that's shared between your, your devices. Um, to me, it's, it, I'm, I'm hoping that I have an older MacBook air that has, while it has Bluetooth LE Bluetooth 4.0, um, it's an older chipset that doesn't support handoff. Um, and I talked about a hack, I think weeks back, um, mm-hmm. to kind of unlock some of the additional capabilities. I want to see if this works without me having that hack installed or what. I, I just installed it. Ah. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, 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 we're doing this. <laughs> we're, we're completely doing this. <laughs> so let me know, you have a newer MacBook Pro. I have, so, and I know handoff does work on my your Mac, Mac Mini, Mini upstairs. See, it's funny because I was right at that break point of the older Mac Mini and the older Mac, the MacBook Air. Both my devices have Bluetooth 4.0, but they don't. Both of them don't support um, the the handoff and things like that. So I can use continuity to get a phone call or to do something like that. But things like if I have Safari open on my device, what, I don't see it What year it open. did you say that the, the that usually... What's that? What, what year is the uh, breaking point on that? Usually? It's the twenty, the mid-2011 Air and Mini. Okay. So. Yeah, I think, I, I think I, I'm, I'm right on the edge, too. Uh, the, I think I have you a, have the silver uh, one, though, right? You have what? the silver Mini? Yeah, silver. You have the thin. I have the white... Oh, wow. Thick yeah. Device that had the optical drive and, and whatnot. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will work without that. I'm I'm waiting to see, are we going to get an air with Retina mm-hmm. before I decide what my next laptop's going to be? I was trying to hold out for <laughs> <laughs> No, wait, this doesn't make sense, though. Like, I, I'm not seeing where to... There's an app you have to download on your computer. Oh, okay. Too. Well, I'm on their site, and I couldn't find it. Um, okay, then we go here. And we download it. All right, I want to fuss with this a little bit on the side. Um, but yeah, we're completely doing that. <laughs> and then you pair it. Uh, and it's um, soon actually coming to Windows and Linux. So Yeah, yeah, they have uh, things up here on there for that. Um, uh, they have, are they just placeholders, maybe? I think they're placeholders. The Windows and Linux icons? Yeah, they're just, yeah, they're just placeholders. That's what confused me, because I put my, my mouse up there and nothing reacted. I didn't realize I, I didn't really uh, uh, do that. So... Um, I don't know, let's see how let's see how easy the setup is. This is exciting, I know. But I don't we'll check into that later out and hopefully I can report back on how, how well that's doing. So um, awesome. It is finger key. Finger you want to check key. that out on the app store, fingerkeyapp.com to find out more information about it. So um I got something cool. This could have been this could have also almost been my awesome thing of the week. I got excited because somebody was talking. What was I listening to? I think I was listening to This Week in Tech um, when they, they brought this up. No, no, no. It was uh, Mac Power Users, I think. I don't know. I listen to a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, that's where it gets tough. It's like, <laughs> where, which show did I hear where this Where did on? I hear that? Especially Monday. There's a lot of background podcasting going on. But there is a Wemo compatible crockpot, Chilla. I saw that. Yes. And this is a thing that happens. Somebody decided this was going to be a thing that happened. They talked about like the internet appliances. It, it's completely here. So I guess, you know, the idea, uh, it seems it's a $130 crock pot. I don't know what the general median for crock pots is. Um, six quarts, da, 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 uh, well, at least the one I found. I just like looked up mm-hmm. internet crock pots and this is the first one I found. <laughs> uh, just to say, hey, this is a thing. But yeah, I, I guess like it, you, 
you know, what log into an app and, you know, if you have it set up and you're like, well, I'm going to be late from work, I need to actually turn that off or, or, or elongate that time or something like that, you get to check in on it. There you go. I want this for like, I could see me using this more for like a washer. Like kick off, like set up my laundry, put the soap in there. Mm -hmm. And I want the laundry to be ready when I get home to switch into the dryer. The crock pot, like we use, we like crock pot cook and it's like set it and forget it. Yeah. So throw all the stuff in there and just throw it on low or warm and let it just cook all day. So I, I'm interested in, I, I want other stuff. I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sold on the crock pot idea other than the fact that to your point, if you're going to be late or something's going on and you need to turn it off. Where I, I figure I would just use one of my Wemo switches for that, but um, I, I want more. I want more internet connected stuff. More, not just my crockpot. Don't mind me. I'm pairing my phone to my computer for this <laughs> finger thing. <laughs> That's where I think I'm going to get stuck. Is I can't pair my phone to my computer oh, no. via Bluetooth. Okay. So I, I don't. I don't go to my login screen and I have uh, my computer actually nice. listed right there. It says my Mac Pro and I have a guitar for some reason. I never change the icon once it's something super goofy like they gave me a pink flower or something. So I'm a guitar for some reason and I'm going to and I guess they put it on the you can put it on the home screen for quick access, I guess. Yes, you can. Yeah, and there's like a widget. Yeah, there's a widget right there and you pull up your home screen if you're on video you go down to finger key and there's a little fingerprint so i'm going to click on that it's looking for my computer it's looking for my computer it's looking for my computer i don't know about this being quick <laughs> uh, we'll play with that a little bit um but computer not found oh this is no good is one or is it using wi-fi or bluetooth I don't know. I'm on Wi-Fi. Are they on the same Wi-Fi network? I'm on Bluetooth. They're, they're probably not. No, they're not on the Wi-Fi network. That's that might. This be one's it. this one's corded, and this is probably on the Wi-Fi down here. That's different than everybody else. All right. We'll we'll experiment with that a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely on the other Wi-Fi. Anyways, uh, see what else we got here. Um, this is some big news that came up. Um, I actually saw this from Andy Quayle uh, at Techberg on the Twitters. Um, Apple uh, CEO. Tim Cook puts aside $291,000 for a uh, Pittsburgh uh, uh, area school, Steel, Steel Valley, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> uh, so a little bit, little bit of love uh, from, from the, uh, uh, the, the, the Big Apple. Um, I don't know if he has any uh, um, um, hooks to the, to the area, how they picked it or anything. Um, because the article really just kind of goes to, he just made the announcement that he donate money to the Steel City, Steel Valley School District in September. The offer wasn't accepted until this week uh, during the school board meeting. Um, and he arrived to honor philanthropist William Campbell, uh, who retired from Apple, the Apple board in July. Cook offered uh, Campbell a large sum for the district. So there you go. Um, and this was according to valuewalk.com. So uh, some love in the Pittsburgh area from Apple. Love it. Love it. So aside from that, aside from the internet crockpots, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> uh, did you see this article? Um, this was from over at Computer World. Uh, why Google and Facebook need balloons, drones, and rockets. And it touched a bit on that access. And there's been a discussion that's been happening actually a lot, uh, again, on the, over on podcasts and everything over last week. I forgot to log my computer back in over here. Um, but because we talked about, like, they talked about like the small, small percentage of us that live this internet life. We are people do live in Nebraska. People do live in Nebraska. Um, uh, actually, I was talking with Rob. Uh, I didn't, uh, I wanted to bring this up for Awesome Cast. Anyways, um, there's a giant, giant area in West Virginia where they have radio telescopes, and it's a no noise area. The FCC said no towers. If you have Wi-Fi in your house, you have to have a special, basically, bubble Wi-Fi. Um, oh. Like, people can, can iMessage each other on the iPhone if they're in the Wi-Fi bubble in their house. There was a TV show that someone actually fled to there. 
to be like hidden from the police or or makes sense or something. I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, there's a show on USA about a guy that's like a CIA agent. And they they had to go there to track someone down, <laughs> and and they they claim that like people don't get headaches there, and mm-hmm. like it, it's re- an, a really interesting location. Yeah, it, 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 the, 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 I think they call it the world's uh, the uh, America's small uh, quietest town or quietest place or something. Um, but but anyways, but but the, again. Aside from that, that's kind of a little bit diversion from the original story here, uh, but really kind of exploring the idea of you know why we need uh, uh, you know the loon. We talked about the project loon. Um, there are other initiatives. Let me see. Like zero can... Facebook. And... Zero, v- fa- <laughs> okay, there's Facebook zero. There's like is, is there a Google zero? Like there's a bunch of these like zero companies, and I just keep thinking Coke zero. Like, uh, because there, there was like three companies. I like think zero, zero, cool. zero, something, zero, something, zero. What's that? From hackers. Zero, zero cool from cool. hackers. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I won't watch hackers again. I got that. I bought that. It's one of those where I had to go buy the DVD. You do have to buy the DVD. I don't understand why they don't like. It was sometimes it streams on Netflix. Sometimes. Sometimes. But, but it was just one of those. Nope. That's the one I need to be like, able to pop in. And I was so sad when the girl at the exchange didn't know what I was talking about. Even like. Apple, I think you can only rent it. You can't purchase it, and like it's really quirky. I don't know wh- how they figured out the Weird agreements rights. for that movie. <laughs> Weird rights. And it's not <laughs> like it was a big hit movie. Yeah. It is kind of a cult classic, you know. I mean, but I'm the guy. I got hackers now. I got antitrust. Remember antitrust? I remember antitrust. That was a great. I, I enjoyed. That I own. Movie. I own that. I enjoyed that movie. Um, I wish I could get a copy of Pirates of Silicon Valley. I've been this close to picking it up a couple of times. Um, but Do you have uh, sneakers? I don't have sneakers. Sneakers is a good one. Have I seen sneakers? Oh, Robert Redford? I don't think I've seen sneakers. Oh, you have to see sneakers. Okay. That, okay. That's a really good, like, we're, we're gonna see old school sne- hacker type movie. But it, it, Really? It, yeah. Hmm. It was like one of my... Like to me, it's up there with war games. It's not as it's it's all about cryptography and and encryption, um, but yeah, Sidney Portier, Robert Redford, River Phoenix. Oh wow! Um, yeah, it has. Um, oh, what's his name? From let me drop one on you. Let me drop. Dan I don't know where I don't know. Where we're going somewhere else with this. <laughs> Virtuosity. Virtuosity. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. And I think Russell Crowe was the bad guy. Oh, was. I think you're right. That was a weird movie. That one, what was? Were they fighting him in virtual reality? I think they, they were, were fighting him in virtual reality, and then somehow he got out. Because it was something like there was a virtual reality. No, he was like an AI, right? Mm-hmm. That got out. Yeah. So it's sort of like that other one with Denzel Washington, with the guy that with the soul that transferred. But I don't know if I saw that one. I saw the one where they time traveled. Can't remember what Denzel Washington movie that was. They could I look. They could Denzel look. Washington. They could. I think this it was is a they, whole other podcast. They could look into the future, and then it, through this like device, they could see like what crimes were going to occur, mm-hmm. and then try to stop it. Almost like pre-crime, like Minority Report. Let's just but bounce really, through like every really. sci-fi we're, movie we're, that was ever going, made. We're going a weird way. We'll link them all but together. Anyways, if you haven't yet, watch Hackers. Yes. Um, that's that's the moral of the story. Um, I also I also own the Facebook movie. It's a good movie. Plus, it has a Nine Inch Nails soundtrack. I love it. Um, anyways, uh, so people without internet <laughs> <laughs> and drones and loons. So it was a little bit more about Loon, um, of which they're testing down in like Australia and uh, I believe New Zealand. They said uh, apparently Facebook is working on. Uh, a more uh, drone based uh, option for this, but it, it, it and we kind of. I don't think it was very clear when when this was first kind of put out and in the conversation, but it is to access these places. Like like there's areas in India, there's areas all over the place that just don't have access and don't have the opportunity. To, that comes with the internet, you know. I often say the things that I do, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not a day jobber, you know, um, is because of the internet. And I couldn't do when when I when I when I decided to make this move, I kept out saying I couldn't do this five years ago. I couldn't do anything like this with the resources when I got out of school. But at that point in 2010, it w- I was able to, you know, especially with video, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's a whole other game to be doing video projects 
10 years ago when we didn't have this kind of internet. I have 25 up and down. It's insane. When the right? drones, the drones they're talking about, right? They're, they're like a plane type drone. They're not like what I yeah, think of like yeah. a four, it's not like four propellers. They're not that like lifts hovering or anything. Yeah. They're, they're actually like, they're like kind circling of, the globe. Almost right. like a glider. Right. And, and the idea is it's a mesh network. So again, we've talked about mesh mm-hmm. like happening up here in Allentown um, with, with uh, I'm sorry, I forget the name, but, but with a hardware store, uh, when we talk to Josh Lucas about mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, uh, look up Mesh. If you go to our YouTube.com uh, slash an awesome cast, uh, we have a separate video out for, I want to say it's like Auto Mesh or something like that. But just look up Mesh, you should be able to find it. Um, but again, like given that access, like, like could you imagine, you know, again, small percentages making, <laughs> doing as much damage as we do <laughs> already? Um, could you imagine if that opens up to, to, a lot more of these other countries, you know, and, and that becomes accessible, you know, uh, maybe not in the world's quiet a city, you know, or the nation's quiet a city, obviously, but, um, you know, to, to, to kind of open that up, I think, I think it could be really important. Um, but, uh, I, I don't know, really good article. If you want to check out computer world, we tweeted it here, um, or, over the last week. So check out all our social media for, for a lot of these links are all shared throughout the week as well. Hey, big shout to a friend of the show, Walt Ribeiro. Uh, his Patreon is going through a shift right now. I uh, remember he was trying to do this, the mashup videos mm-hmm. with, uh, with video game characters and dancers and everything. He is trying to build an orchestra. Cause remember he was doing the covers of, of hits and video yeah. game songs with the orchestral music. He actually wants to get a, an orchestra together. Um, he has goals for putting together a five person orchestra that makes songs, um, you know, six person, seven person, eight person. Uh, he's got goals for that. Uh, so if you want to go check that out, go to, wow, he got patreon.com slash Walt. <laughs> There's some prime real estate right there for Patreon. So um, he's got he's got uh, 22 patrons so, he, patrons, so he's on his way. Uh, I think there's an example. I think this video is an example of his uh, dance stuff that he was doing uh, before. Uh, so go, I just want to give him a shout out so people can check him out. So. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, you got, a, got anything you want to bring up here? So I'm, I'm just running down my list. Uh, dual sc- and I actually think this phone looks slick. If you go down in the uh, the dock to the, uh, the dual you. screen I got you. phone, I think we may have talked about this last year because this is their second version of this phone. Mm-hmm. But it's a it's an Android based phone, um, which don't get me wrong, I really like Android. And this concept to me is awesome because one of the number one killers of battery life is your screen. Um, you would think that, well, wait a minute, this has two screens. It's going it, to, it, I'm just going to watch my battery meter drain. Hmm. The one side of the phone is e-ink and it's meant for notifications. Uh, you know what? I've, I've heard about them talking about this this week and this is the first I'm seeing this. So the, the one thing that I think that's a little tough for this is the, the app's there have to be apps designed for Yoda phone. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Y O T A. Um, but to have an at a glance and the, and the example they give is clock weather, um, missed phone calls, SMS um, emails, alarms, um, and an unlock. So you can actually swipe to unlock on the back of the phone. Um, they do have the ability to display, um, a decent, picture or, or things of that nature on the back of the phone. Um, these are more, wi- it's more meant for at a glance widgets, mm-hmm. but to be able to have my phone with the screen down and get a quick at a glance without having to hit the, pa- like having to hit the power button or, or tap the screen or whatever, just having this on, think of it like it, it's the quality of Kindle. I mean, we're not, we're not talking 1080p here. Um, it's black and white. Uh, I, I just think it has a really nice look to it. Um, the phone does come in a little pricey. I don't see the price in it. I think it was in uh, six hundred and ten dollars. Um, yeah, that's, that's is an expensive phone. off off contract phone. Yeah. Um, but that does get you eight megapixel rear camera and a thirty and thirty two gigs of storage. Um, it's running AMOLED on the one side and E Ink on the other. Um, should go on sale here in this 20 European countries in December. So I, I, I really like the, I really like this concept. I really like the phone. I like the idea. I, I, this seems a little more usable than the uh, Samsung version where they had like the, 
the bent the edge. screen when it was the edge that had yeah. the notifications. Like I like that it's just like there, so you can put your screen down and and and, and obviously the, you know this is lower. It saves you some battery life and everything doing the e ink. Well, um, the, the interesting thing is, is they didn't put a forward facing camera on this phone. The reason they didn't put a forward, so they didn't put a selfie cam, pretty much is what yeah. they didn't put on the on the on the on the phone, and they didn't because what do you need? to do to take a selfie you need to be able to see where you are at in the frame right yeah it can do it doesn't look great yeah but it can give you the idea of where you're at in frame in e-ink and then you can snap a decent picture with the front facing camera so you'll you'll have an e-ink picture representation the the back facing and you and you flip it over to see the high quality what what it actually looks like after pictures yeah okay Uh, Sure. It's, Which I, w- I was hoping because it didn't have the forward-facing camera that it would be a little cheaper. But yeah. No. But it's got a freaking E8 display on mm-hmm. the back. And it, 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 it's one of those where um, I, I wonder if we were like kind of feature phones where we're like you, you're swapping out features at this yeah. point. We're like, well, we gave you this e screen. We'll skip on that other camera. But, but they have a solution. I like to see that they, yeah. it's not just straight up. We just rescinded that idea. So... Um, What's going on with HBO? HBO, they're saying April. April's going to be the month. <laughs> Standalone streaming. Um, I'm excited for it. I may end up cutting the cord again. The only <laughs> thing, um, I'm keeping it for two things, Showtime and HBO right now. Yeah. And I could be convinced. I think the one show that I have left on Showtime is this is their last season. So... So you're you're doing that whittling down thing like like we were doing yeah. for a bit there where it's like ah it's, I still have these other shows I guess I'll buy these last couple seasons on Prime because there's not on Hulu or something like that so you're you're kind of doing that with Showtime huh yeah and it, and for those of you who don't know Pirate Bay is down right now and it may not be coming back so they claim really so that could be a could be a problem for those people that are legally getting their content. Oh man, it's because all those copies of Annie out there. Yes, I, they they went right into wherever they're out of Sweden or whatever. Oh wow, I think we've been trying to chase them down for years. Yeah, the Swedish all... police raid the Pirate Bay and knock the site offline. Are somebody tripped over a cord as they came in? <laughs> That's what really happened. I'm like, oh, just just checking things out. Uh... <laughs> All right, what else we got here? Uh, Gmail lets you edit Microsoft Office documents in your inbox. Thank you, Gmail. And I think you're going to continue to see Gmail do uh, continue to push the envelope on Office documents. Mm -hmm. Um, They bought QuickOffice? Yeah, and it's supposed to be better compatibility. I actually had a discussion because we were... The idea is... uh, my wife was going to get a MacBook Air, but we're just looking at the cost versus what she does. And I'm like, you know, these Chromebooks might be okay for you. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and here's one thing I didn't know. So she she pays for, like we said, Office 365, right? She never uses the application. She uses the web. She's using the web version Office, all the time. Office I'm like, web apps or whatever Well, then it is. do this. Yeah. You know? I, and, and we did have the discussion because I was like, you know, I, I brought up that, well, they're supposed to be getting better with the, the Office documents. Uh, uh, her headers and stuff, some of the formatting still doesn't work yeah. in Google Drive or in Google Docs. Uh, so it, it doesn't always work in Office Docs, so don't let that fool you. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 it's also it's also uh, by the way, thank you for the Twitter shoutouts, uh, both Wemo and Sighthound during nice. our show. So what's up, guys? Um, Thank you, and thank Mike Allen doing awesome work tweeting during the show and, and uh, let them know we're talking about them. Their ears are burning, and now they know why. Um, but no, it's also you know, it's also is the thing that I use Word for the reason to do this. Um, I kind of had to do a little bit of a breakdown because I started saying, "Oh, but you can do this, and you don't need Photoshop because you got Pixlr and stuff." And I was like, "Wait, why do I pay for Photoshop? Because I use, I could have been using Pixlr this entire time." Because <laughs> I started thinking about what I do use Photoshop for. But then again, it's nice to have when I do actually want to make a flyer, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, but generally, like I do the show, um, I do I do the show um, um, graphics and stuff, and that's like something I could do. 
fairly easy, but it's like time because everything needs to upload and then download your file and everything. Uh, so it can get a little sketchy, but, um, but if nobody needs Photoshop anymore, if they're just doing rudimentary fixing, putting an image together, you know, kind of editing. And, and honestly, start with Pixlr, and you'll be able to translate to Photoshop pretty easily. Like I, I, I did download Pixlr. And I have it on on my device. I really oh, I really enjoy it. I have it on my phone. I'm talking about like the, I have it on the Mac. Like the dot com where you go. I haven't used the dot com. And it's basically it, it it's basically a version of Photoshop in Flash. I in Flash. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, I know, but it works. Me. But it works. You're killing it's me. It's amazing. It blows my mind, and of in course, flash. and not that it's going to make much difference because Photoshop's going to be in a browser here. It's in beta right now, mm -hmm. and probably in six months, where you're going to be able to pay ten bucks and freaking Photoshop on your Chromebook. That's amazing. Although it's kind of funny because I guess the way they're doing that is um, um, the Photoshop is actually running on a computer somewhere, and they're just streaming it. Yeah. Which is, seems like a weird workaround. So and I and AJ is going to kill me. Uh -oh. I don't remember who they partnered with. I want to say oh, some, it wasn't VMware. It might have been Citrix. Some big. I feel G Google. Like Google Cit partnered with Citrix or Cisco or something. Somebody I, I to do Citrix. all that virtualization. Um, so I think I think you're going to see a lot of Windows apps kind of stream to the Chromebook. In fact, I think there recently in Pittsburgh there was a big meeting of the mind summit type thing um oh, there is a big thing about uh I, I just did a quick google search to see if i could find out if that was right but there is a big thing about google chromebook streaming windows through citrix now right so now boom there you go yeah so i i think i think i think our next like home computer type thing is gonna be a Chrome device. Um, hey, and Carla's Carla's next laptop very might, very well might be honestly, where where we're going to run into an issue is, um, like where and we're not huge on Google Drive. Mm -hmm. um, where are we going to store all of her photos? And I wonder, does it work well if you try to use a different service than Google Drive? Right. Like it's made for Google Drive. You you're, right. you're kind of shoehorned in that. Well, is there is there, there's a can I put a directory on the Chrome device and tell it to go to Dropbox or through some kind of Chrome extension. I, I don't know. It's a possibility. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a possibility, you know, but generally it's like this stuff goes here, you know? Yeah. They always and maybe, and maybe that's the thing that pushes me. I'm still thinking Microsoft's going to be one drive's going to be my end all with unlimited file space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for, for what it costs. Uh, on that, I got to see the HP stream in person. Mm -hmm. It advertised heavy on Hulu right now, by the way. Um, and I remember we're sitting there, and I, I, we, we're, we were at Office Depot because I had to go get, get ink. So we're there, and that's where we were like, oh, let's, let's look at some things, you know, just to see. And, um, and uh, yeah, it, it's sitting there, and I realized like it was like 230 so it must be a little more spec'd out because they're supposed to be coming in at $200. So it's a $200 mm -hmm. Windows 8 machine is the big push on this, right? The screen's not good. Yeah, I heard the screen screen's looks horrible. like it, it, the screen looks like a, a like a first gen LCD screen, like this one right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's one of those like if you're off, like the the, the field of view, mm -hmm. you can horrible. tell you look at it and you're just like, what is this? You know, um, but then you know, I'm looking at Max and Retinas all day, so that kind of makes a difference too. But um, it, it, it doesn't have the build, you know, you're thinking about, it's comparable to a Chromebook, but I've looked at the Chromebooks that were there that were like 200 to 250, right? Um, and, and you got to think of, okay, so what compares that, that, you know, I'm really big on build quality. I always say you get what you pay for with the Apple. Mm -hmm. um, and they last, and it's, it's, you know, this thing is freaking metal, you know? Um, but even looking at, like, the HP, the comparable, the $230 or $250 HP 14-inch Chromebook they had there versus the $230 Windows 8 stream, I guess, which is blue, by the way, mm -hmm. like very blue. I thought there was a purple one, There's too. There's probably a purple one, too, so we can get one for me and my wife. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but you got to think, they still have to pay the Windows tax. Even if they, you know, bulked it down or whatever, how much money went into that hardware? How big, wait, how big is the screen? 
I looked like it was probably a 14 inch as well. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Did, uh, was it running the new Bing version of Windows? Because <laughs> they get a discount. They get a discount for the Bing version. <laughs> I, I didn't look into it. Not a touchscreen, for one thing, mm-hmm. obviously. So I think that's... I, and versus, there's like three, three fifty, uh, three hundred fifty dollar, three hundred dollar uh, Chromebooks with touchscreens. So, I mean, I, I kind of, kind of like that idea, you know. I don't know. At some point, when I don't need, maybe when I have other people do video for me, or that's my, when I just become a blogger someday. <laughs> well, I look at this. You know, I, 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 I've actually thought about. I mean, we haven't. We have. I have a couple monitor sitting around what would it hurt to throw a chrome box mm-hmm. in a room mm-hmm. 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 where i mean th- those types of applications where maybe i don't do a laptop maybe i do a box maybe i do and one of the with the knock the the new unit of computing little uh, intel box that's where i wish Man, chrome box is 150 dollars on amazon starting mm-hmm like that's where I wish that's where I think Google Chrome as an OS could greatly or greatly make people rethink their hardware. So you're running around putting Linux on a bunch of old hardware, right? Right. Why I would isn't love the, I would love there a better Chrome install. Yeah. And you put that's, Chrome on everything. That makes that's where sense. I think it makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, but that's where I think if, if they want to really advance the ball on that one, I think we need to see some way to redistribute Chrome but off. Actually, you know what? Man, you know what? I'm thinking about this. But, but ideally, at some point, you know, we use Desktop Presenter and, and, and like when you're on Google Hangout, we're streaming it from this computer over here, right? Mm-hmm. If you're just using Google Hangout, and you have a setup where you can bring in video inputs, like physical, I like can plug in, and these are all video inputs, like our two webcams are right mm-hmm. now here in the studio. These, this thing's got the ports. Uh, you can HDMI out this thing, and now you have a new Google Hangout array for each of your guests at 150 bucks a pop. That's and and you know nothing else is going to be popping on up on this thing. That's going to you know, go nuts on your bandwidth or, or the CPU or anything. You're golden. Mm-hmm. You're golden with these things. Like just, just as just, I mean, it's under a hundred four gigahertz Celeron, two gigabytes, two gigabytes of Ram. I don't know if that would, that would do like HD hangouts, but I don't know. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now you got me thinking, damn it. Well, how easy is it to bring in multiple HDMI stream? Like, I have a little bit of problem with that right now. Actually, okay. I'm trying to figure that out. I got I got two cards, and they both crash Wirecast, so I'm uh, working on that. So, um, but but if you had something, if you, if you did something like you had a I don't know a, a TriCaster or something, and you just these little hundred fifty dollar boxes, you just plug all those in. There's all there's all your stuff, you know. Um, yeah, it's one less thing to worry about with those updates and everything. That's awesome, Chilla. I gotta go. Pl- I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go uh, get some ramen and uh, and talk about video games. Video sir. games, good sir. Anything coming up here? Um, it's Christmas. Get it's your, Christmas. Get your, get your peeps some tech love at Christmas tech time. Love. What, whether it be a five dollar gift card to the app store of their choice, it's or, a really or easy one. That's uh, and, and I think that's a good uh, yeah. It, you know, there's a lot of people out there that could use a little tech love. A little tech, tech love. love. Maybe a little, little, like, I'll do you a favor and throw Chrome OS. If you're out to throw Chrome OS on my grandma's laptop or something, you know. There you go. Uh, my brother is in the chat room. He's saying he would love to throw Chrome OS on his laptop. Um, he's, I know he's he's experimenting with Steam OS last I knew. Oh, so, that'd be fun. I'll be here report. I, I've that. actually, like, tried to take machines... And I'm not, ta- I mean, like this old 2011 MacBook Air with, we're talking four gig of RAM. We're not talking like brand new 16 gig, 32 gig machines, but, um, and tried to virtualize just the heck out of them. Like on this, on this machine, I have Android in a VM. I run two, I actually run two different Android VMs, one using BlueStacks and one using the, the Android x86 
project. I run Windows 7 on here. I run Windows XP. Obviously, not all at the same time. Um, I have played around with a virtualized Chrome OS. The problem with Chrome OS is it's not... I haven't figured out a way, and I'm sure there's there's alternative ways that are... If you get caught, I don't know what Google would do to you, but you can't get the Flash kit, which a lot of the Chrome extensions require on Chrome OS. Mm -hmm. You can't install Flash, and the Chrome App Store doesn't work real well. So that's why I've shied away. Maybe I could look that back up. But is it that's just with the Chromium stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking. I, I, I am looking at. Uh, brought up a little bit of the install. They do. They do actually have an install thing on the Chromium.org. I'm surprised. But does it does it include Flash? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't well, tell you. Well, I, um, and I know it's on a non Chromebook. Yeah, it has something for a non Chromebook. So it just said, "Here you go." So, wow, a little bit of command line. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. And I actually used like a USB installable. Yeah, like and there's other ISO. ones. There are other ones that do. Uh, there's a Chrome OS dot hexa dot net h e x x e h um, that that he has a bootable version. I don't know. It's been updated in a while. That's the one I've tried in the past, and it just has not worked out. So, um, man, I'm, I might have to poke around at that a little bit more. So, anyways, on that note, um, I don't think there's any tech events coming up. Uh, uh, I don't think so. Uh, well, Open Coffee Club was this morning, actually, so I should have plugged that last week. I gave you a little notice on that. Um, but if you wanted to go check that out, what they're doing at Alpha Lab, uh, there's actually a group on Facebook. Um, look, look for Open Coffee Club Alpha Lab there. It was actually, they had the Coffee Club at Alpha Lab gear over in East Liberty. I think that's the first time they've done that. It's usually down here at Southside. Yeah. But I think they're moving everybody out there. Oh, really? I, I, I think. I don't think that's... It's pr- to Liberty. I, I hope that wasn't privileged knowledge. Uh, I, <laughs> no, I don't think it is. I think it's pretty open. If it, if it is, you did not hear it here. Well, you did not hear it here. <laughs> no, uh, absolutely not. Um, um, I could just think that's what's happening i don't know i i I think i heard that from somebody um but no that's cool they got great stuff going on there throw mills right there it's right across the street from target so you're good there (laughs) it's your starbucks (laughs) um and and down the street from like google and all that too that bakery square so great article actually i believe is in the post gazette uh about what google has done to the city Ah, since they moved into town i'll have to go look at that so uh, we i retweeted it probably in my account, I saw uh, So if you want to look back there, uh, uh, that there you go. So uh, at Chilla on the Twitters, I'm at Sorgatron. Uh, I talked to a little bit of core cutting this morning on, on the Good Morning podcast, and I've been you know doing that here and there. Uh, maybe I'll I'll go a little more in depth as I as I experiment with these webcams uh, for a security system. Uh, next week is our holiday party. I try to get a bunch of people in here. Loki is usually in for these if he's not busy and, and everything. We'll try to pack as many people in the studio as we can. And we'll also be doing a holiday party, holiday party for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Your Enders for everything else. Trying to figure out, we, 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 we're trying to figure out if we can do some uh, little shows to, so we have something to release. Those two weeks will be off. Uh, so you're just not without your awesome cast. Um, one may involve Yik Yak. Nice. May involve can, you, Yik Yak. can you support more than the two webcams you have? Here? Yeah. Um, you have more ports? Yeah, I got more ports. Give me have a shot. Why? I'll bring it. Well, if there's more people here. Yeah, we might have to do something about that. I'll, I have two. I think I have two at home that are one's one of the nicer Logitechs and the other one's the Microsoft. Nice. Try nice. to bring it. Let me give a shot. Yeah. Worst that will happen, it'll crash. Wah, wah. <laughs> it'll crash like a flash player. We got a pretty hefty machine down here on this now, so it's not such a big deal. So, anyways, until next time, uh, please follow us. We're uh, uh, at AwesomeCast on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook and Google+. Plus. Uh, you can join us here every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Links over at awesomecast.net as well. Email your thoughts and stories to awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And you can uh, please, please subscribe and comment on iTunes especially, but also on YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher. And also, big thanks, as I mentioned before, to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR, helping with notes and tweets all night long on this and other podcasts. It's podcast night from Chilla, from, 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 I'm Sorg. I was pointing at him, and I forgot that was me <laughs> on the screen wait, if down I... here. <laughs> yeah, like that. Oh, wait, wait. That oh, way. Oh. Don't get jealous, Riz. Don't tell Riz I did this. Um... <laughs> 
that's why you need to watch video <laughs> on your Chromecast, you know, but as, as you do. I actually took my Chromecast out of the box. I forgot to bring it up. It's been, so I got it last year for Christmas. Yeah. I opened it last what week. What the hell? Really? <laughs> yeah. But why you not? have so many devices to watch that's crap pro- on. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a fire stick next to my Chromecast. In, in a, whenever it comes in, <laughs> wherever the hell it comes in, I don't know, next year, but at this rate, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, thank you to our awesome uh, our awesome uh, chat room that's been uh, uh, bumping all night. And uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.